So it looks like Google will be rolling out some big things like very soon next week. Seems like we'll be saying bye to Google Bard and saying hi to Gemini. So Google Bard is currently running on Gemini. So we're getting rid of the name Bard and just everything will be Gemini. And there will be something called the advanced tier, which I think this will be the ultra, Gemini ultra. I'll show you why in just a second. So first and foremost, here's the little leak that has everybody up in arms. So sometimes in certain dev tools and certain browsers, you're able to pull some information that exists on web pages that is not sort of easily visible. Maybe there's certain like upcoming changes that are preloaded, et cetera. We've seen this happen before. So the big thing here is that they're rolling out something called Gemini Advanced that you can use to access Google. This is like the new version of Bard, or you can think of it as Bard Premium. And it's going to be using their most capable AI model, Ultra 1.0. So Gemini Ultra. And with our Ultra 1.0 model, Gemini Advanced is far more capable at highly complex tasks like coding, logical reasoning, following nuanced instructions, and creative collaboration. And it will continue to expand in the coming months with multimodal capabilities, even better coding features, as well as ability to upload and analyze files, data, and more. And Gemini Advanced will be a paid plan. It is available and optimized only for English, but can respond to queries in other languages that it's available in. And so the changelog currently with the date February 7th attached to it directly says that Bard is now Gemini. That highlight is not very helpful, which is in line with what Google had said during the announcement. They're saying it's coming, you know, soon. I think they either said, you know, first quarter of 2024 or the first few months of 2024, something like that, the beginning of 2024. So, Certainly February 7th seems like it very well could be it. And there's one more thing. Also somewhere here in the thread, there used to be a comment about Demis Hobbes appearing, potentially appearing on a podcast right around that time. I'm not sure it's been, if it's been deleted or not, but so here's Dwarkesh Patel. So here's his channel, his podcast, and uh, he's got some pretty cool guests on there. He's got Ilya Sutskiver, Amade, and I mean, tons and tons of people. Eliza Yudkovsky was on there. It looks like he had Mark Andreessen on there. And it seems like now he will be interviewing Demi Sasabis. Demi is, of course, the co-founder and CEO of Google DeepMind, working on AGI. And I mean, he is sort of one of the big players in the AI space. Definitely somebody to know because he really, him and his team, they're really pushing out some incredible breakthroughs. Basically, I would say the coolest things out of Google is from DeepMind. And for a long time, so even though Google purchased them, I believe in 2014, for a long time, they were almost like two separate entities. They were sort of under the alphabet umbrella, but different teams, different cultures, different locations. I believe they were in London and I think they still are. But more recently, they're being pushed together more and more, it sounds like. I don't know the whole inside story, but that's kind of what people are reporting. So I wasn't able to find the exact date. It sounds like this interview might be dropping on February 7th. It may have been already pre-recorded and it may be aligning with the release of Gemini Ultra or Gemini Advanced, whatever you want to call that, with the changing from bar to Gemini, etc. It might all kind of drop at the same time. And it looks like there's uh, going to be a Google Assistant app available through the Play Store and it's being renamed to Gemini. Here are some screenshots of like kind of the early, early version of it. And the app might only be available on certain select devices. So it might be the tensor powered pixels on the Galaxy S24. And it looks like the Galaxy S24 is very highly reviewed. Looks like this phone is going to have tons of different AI features built into it, which will be interesting to see. I might have to shell out 1300 bucks to test it out. And Google looks like it's been rapidly catching up with the AI competition, releasing some pretty incredible products. So we've talked about this one, but I just realized that Demis has uh, reposted this one. So breaking news from the arena where Bard Gemini Pro has climbed to nearly the top of all the LLMs with only the GPT-4 Turbo being above it. Now, this was the first day this was released. Since then, there's been more votes and some more changes. Let's take a look at the updated scores. So here it is. So this is updated as of February 2nd. They don't, they don't update this every single day, but it looks like two versions of the GPT-4 are, are on top, including January 25th preview by GPT-4, which is their latest model. And at number three is Bard running Gemini Pro. Notice it's not Gemini Ultra, it's Gemini Pro. So there's a few GPT-4 versions above it. There's a few GPT-4 versions below it. So it does seem like Gemini Pro is neck to neck with GPT-4. 
One minor thing to keep in mind is that, and I think the Chatbot Arena added this little this column specifically to kind of point this out, is that Gemini Pro, it's online. So it's connected to the internet. So whereas most of these other ones, they have a knowledge cutoff, this one does not. So I'm sure this gives it a improvement in responses. So if we take this at face value, we can say that Google caught up to GPT-4, to OpenAI, with their Gemini Pro. And potentially the Gemini Ultra will exceed it. Now, of course, people are saying, well, as soon as that happens, we should expect OpenAI to fire back with their latest, greatest, newest model, whatever that's going to be called, GPT-5 or whatever. So if that's the case, February might be quite a month for AI progress. We've also covered Imogen 2, which I found to be pretty good. There's still certain things it's not as good as some of the other competitions, but where it wins big is on accuracy. You can really specify the prompts and it really captures the details. There's very few sort of artifacts. You don't see weirdness in the images. They can be very, very lifelike. This image I think really shows you the accuracy of the prompt to image. You know, here they're describing oranges on a chopping board and light is passing through the orange segment right here, casting orange light on the chopping board right here. I haven't seen this type of precision in other models. But really the big thing for Google here is the fact that they're loading Imogen 2 into Vertex AI, which is really meant for big corporations, big companies to be able to start using it. Or as they say, enterprise ready text to image capabilities. Number one, Google will protect those companies from various copyright issues, copyright lawsuits, taking some of the risk off of them to use these images. And after looking at some of the things that they're able to do with it, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed. So here, for example, they are able to generate product shots of realistic looking handbags, for example, with various different styles, different backgrounds. You're able to change the textures and the colors. You're able to take a few pictures on your phone of an existing bag, upload it to a model, and then it's able to just crank out you know, all sorts of images of that particular bag. So this is an actual model, like a neural net that you're training to use. You're training to sort of produce images of this bag that you've uh, you've told it to. Then you're able to put that bag into any sort of environment with different lighting, et cetera. Upscale the resolution. Here's an upscaler so you can create high res images from anything basically. And the LLM, I'm assuming the Gemini model, will produce whatever text you need in whatever language you need, giving captions for the images, product descriptions, and also be able to sort of answer questions about the product so it, it understands semantically what questions people might ask. So it kind of is able to answer questions about the pro these products that you're creating. So for e-com owners, for people that are running online stores, this is absolutely incredible. You're able to create stunning images on the fly and just localize them to anywhere in the world this will be interesting to see. Then, of course, we have Google's Lumiere, which is able to produce text to videos, various in-painting, out-painting, using a reference image to create videos out of that image, stylized generation by using a reference image to create little animations of any other image with this style. Then we have things like Alpha Geometry and Olympia level AI system for geometry. And as a very impressive achievement, I do believe, in fact, that Demi Sashabis initially said one step closer to AGI, but then ended up correcting that or took it back not to overblow the results, not to overhype them. Of course, Gemini Pro appearing in the rankings. There's progress with the AI bioisomorphic labs for various pharma deals, drug discovery, etc. Of course, the breakthroughs in robotics, the language action vision models that are showing promise for generally capable robots, robots able to understand their environment, understand human commands be able to reason. This is SGE, Search Generative Experience. Let's take it for a spin. So the generative AI in search, we've probably all seen that, you know, that's basically this thing right here. So let's say we want to find out the highest selling artist of all time. We click generate, or sometimes it does it automatically. And they give you a little overview. Then we have SGE while browsing, where you can click on the G icon and the Chrome toolbar. So pretty cool, but kind of basic, right? Compared to something like perplexity, where you can just type in whatever you want and gives you just a summary here in this page without loading anything. Have you heard about this incredible thing? So Peter Thiel, uh, you might have heard of him. So he's a big kind of um, investor in the tech space. He's sort of loosely connected to a lot of the people behind, you know, PayPal and way back in the days, Elon Musk. And I mean, he's got his hands in a lot of things. He's He's a big player, but tries to kind of remain a little bit more anonymous and behind the scenes. And now it looks like he's financially backing an event known as the Enhanced Games. This event described as an Olympics on steroids. 
that would basically allow and encourage athletes to use performance-enhancing drugs. The event aims to aid research into nutritional supplements and biohacks that push the human body's limits. It looks like a lot of athletes are very interested. It's got a lot of investments from venture capitalists, including Balaji, the guy from Coinbase and A16Z. So some people are mad saying it's, you know, dangerous, a dangerous clown show, not a real sport. The thing is, most sports at the professional level People use all sorts of various ways to enhance their performance, both things they inject, things they do with their blood, like, for example, actually running the blood through certain machines to make it more more oxygenated. I'm not sure the exact process, but I mean, some of the things that the Tour de France people are doing is just out of this world. So most people are doing it, but it's very hidden. It's very hush-hush, which prevents, you know, research into these supplements and biohacks and probably also increases the danger. If it was out and open, we can see what works, what doesn't, what's safe, what's not. So so whoever said this, oh, he is the head of the U.S. anti-doping agency. Well, obviously he's against it. This would put him out of a job. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm on this guy's side, Peter Thiel, or even better, Peter Thiel. Uh, I'm with you, bud. But my point here is that Perplexity is the competition. It's the thing to beat. And since Jeff Bezos and NVIDIA are already investing in it, Google may not be able to just come in and buy something like this. They have to beat this because it really sounds like this thing isn't all that difficult to create. I mean, I'm sure it's technically difficult, but you can build a small team. These are some of the models that can help you, you know, process the LLMs that can process the information and summarize it. More and more of them will be open source. All the information is online. You just have to search for it, kind of parse through, you know, do all the web crawl, find the correct ones. The LLMs will, will summarize them for you. Like something like this, I would not be surprised if people will build their own personal versions of this for their own personal use. So, we're about to see some big things coming out of DeepMind and Google. So stay tuned for the drop of Gemini Advanced for the interview with Demis Hassabis. And it will be very interesting to see what, what follows after that. Because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are expecting Sam Altman, OpenAI, and the team to drop the next big thing right after Google. I hope you enjoyed that. My name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.